there are um, libraries for using JSON or PC built around it. Cross domain JSON. So um, I don't know if you guys are familiar with um, with some of the issues here, but when you're dealing with uh, building like mashups where you're taking data from different sources, um, one of the issues is um, usually with AJAX we're using an XML HTTP request object, right? And that object has the same origin policy, which means you can only connect to your server. You can't connect to other servers with like XHR. And so one of the things that people sometimes do, one of the things you can do is you can set up your server to be a proxy so you can send a request saying, actually, make this request to another server. So you can set up your server to be a proxy, or you can use, um, you can insert script tags. Um, kind of bizarrely enough, XHR can't go across domains, but script tags can. You can put a script tag in that points to any domain in the world you want. And so script tags can access cross domains, but there's difficulty in using script tags in that um, it just loads some JavaScript. You don't know when it lo loaded. You don't know what was in that JavaScript. And so it's, by itself, is not terribly useful. And so the JSONP protocol is just um, basically a definition where we say we want to have a callback parameter. And the callback parameter is going to, uh, to, to be prefix the, JavaScript, the JSON object that's returned in the script. And so what it basically allows us to do is to say, you know, if, if I was going to call JSON source.com to get some JSON, I'm going to say, well, um, when you when you return that JSON, put it have a prefix of done, have a callback of done, and then what the server is going to do is rather than just returning this JSON data, it's going to prefix it with done and wrap it in the parentheses to make it valid. And that way, I can have a, a, a done method that um, can handle this callback. It's going to get executed with this object. And so I, what I can do is I can create my function that's going to handle when it's finished, and then I can load this script and be notified when it's loaded. Yahoo and Flickr um, are examples of different web services that actually um, allow this. And JSON is um, the definition of using JSON for persistence. And um, it has a number of different definitions for how to interact with persistent data. Um, and a lot of JSON is dealing with the information that's been persisted. So this kind of allows you to take a, some steps further to deal with more complex data structures, to deal with things like lazy loading, um, doing modifications, and having some concurrency with that, and having it defined in a, a way that's interoperable. So let, let's take a look at some of the, the issues that it deals with. First of all, circular references. Um, so this is something that I could write in, in JavaScript. I could define this object to have a name of Chris site, and then I could have my wife, and her name is Nikki site. So I have these two objects, and then I want to have the spouse, Nikki, my wife's spouse, refer back to me, and then I want, um, oh, this is actually a mistake, I need to fix this one. It, it should be say, me uh, spouse equals my wife. So basically what I'm saying is my spouse is Nikki, and her spouse is me. So they do a circular reference. Well, you can't do that natively with JSON. There's no way to, to do referencing. It's just it just values, and so and it also shows up in the case where we not necessarily circular references, but where I have two objects pointing to the same object. And so, for example, I can define my child to be Jenica Zay, and then my wife points should have a child that points to the same object, and they should be exactly the same object. If I was to define the age for my child, this child object should be the same object as here, and so that age property should yield the same value, right? Because we're dealing with the same object. Um, and so JSON provides a definition for how to deal with this. And basically, a lot of JSON is just around um, identifying objects, providing an object ID for objects. So, and that really that allows you to do the whole referencing that's necessary to do these things. So, for in, the, in this example, um, rather than just defining that my name is Chris Knight, I'm going to give this object ID of Chris. The Nikki Zype object has an ID of Nikki. And so when I define the spouse, I can just refer back to my ID to this object. And so that allows me to have this Chris object, have the spouse to Nikki, and this spouse point back to this object. And we can do the same thing with the child. The child is defined here with all the properties, but it can be referenced by ID right here. And so we should be able to have validity as far as being able to do things like me, that spouse, that spouse equals me. And I can change the age of my child, and um, it shows up when I reference child in a different way. Um, one of the other um, 
things that you can do with this is by using um, identification and objects, we can also do lazy loading. Lazy loading is a really important uh, feature to be able to have when you're dealing with large persisted object graphs. You know, if you have a list of a huge amount of data or, or you're, you're having a relational database where objects are referencing objects with large pieces of data, um, especially, you know, when you're in the, on the web and you, um, you don't want huge chunks of data being passed to your browser, it can be really valuable to do um, some sort of lazy loading. And so this allows lazy loading to actually be a part of the protocol. So for th this example, we have this object, the name my object, and um, it refers to this large object not needed now, but it doesn't actually provide the definition. So it's implicitly referring to an object that hasn't been loaded yet, and so the client could, at a later point, decide, oh, actually, I do need this object. I'm going to request it from the server and get it back. Um, and then also, by having object, I I object IDs, um, it's also important for object modification. That way, we can say, well, I'm going to modify this object to be a new value. And that way, I can send information back to the server saying, well, I'd actually like this object to be modified. And so it allows interaction. Um, and it also allows, um, I'm going to talk about this a little later, but having actual persisted object graphs that actually cross domains. So we can have object IDs. And it, it, with this protocol, all the object IDs have implicit URLs. It's kind of the same um, relative URI scheme that you have in web pages where you know if you refer to just like mypage.html, that's actually implicitly a full URL for you know HTTP colon slash slash my domain slash. And so you can actually piece together um, things across domains, which is kind of fun. Um, I think I'm going to just check to see what time it is. Yeah, I think I'm just going to kind of swim through this. But basically, arrays, um, you have to do some tricky things with arrays to be able to identify them. Arrays usually are just a list of, you know, just a common delimited list of values. And so you can't have string key name values in your, in your arrays. And so this provides a way of defining um, arrays that um, that includes string key values, and that's valid in JavaScript. And so, for example, in this case, um, this object is actually defined to be an array where the um, list elements in the array are in this section, but it still has an ID. So that way we can have two objects pointing to the same, uh, same array. And it also provides a, a method for doing transposed arrays, which is a, um, a more compact way to send data that has um, exactly the same column in each object. But I'm not going to get into that. Okay. JSON also provides a, uh, a protocol for doing prototypes. Um, I don't know how familiar you guys are with JavaScript, but um, JavaScript supports the idea of having an inheritance not just with classes, but with all objects. And so it's with prototyping. So you can have an object with a certain set of properties, and then you can have another object that inherits from this object. And so it actually inherits all those properties. And so you can override those properties in your instance object. Um, and so those things are possible with JavaScript, and this provides a means for doing that. And so I could have, um, what I've done here is basically I've defined a, a Zite prototype object where all objects that inherit from this, this object have a last name of Zite, and then I can create a new instance of it and define the first name to be Chris. And so if I were to uh, reference Chris or me that first name, it would be an in instance object and I would get Chris, and if I were to reference me.last name, it would get inherited from the site prototype object. Okay. And so, anyway. Um, and then it also provides some structural definition. And so this is kind of analogous, once again, to DTDs or XML schemas. Um, and the JSON R protocol um, is not, you can't do a whole lot because you can't define different attributes for properties. Um, and so this provides a little bit more robust way of providing definitions for validity of data. Um, you can provide various different um, attributes for properties, like descriptions, whether it's read-only, things like that. Uh, and so, and it can be useful for doing validation both on the client and server 